Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day outside. We are so excited to spend time with you and explore ways to create new opportunities. My name is Raisa Noel. I'm the Global Program Events Lead with Women in Cloud, and we are so excited to have you here with us today. You know, for those of you that don't know much about Women in Cloud, we are a community-led economic development organization, and it's designed to create $1 billion in economic access for female tech founders in partnership with, uh, with organizations and, and fortune brands and communities. We focus on three areas. First, our, our focus is on, um, on a female tech entrepreneurship and innovation to foster economic, uh, economic growth and development. Second, to build partnership with fortune brands and, uh, and entrepreneurs and communities to create inclusive cloud tech jobs. And third, to drive nonpartisan political advocacy to advance policies that create and retain economic access for women. So due to the pandemic, uh, a global crisis has, has really been brewing. And you know it's for women and it's due to many factors. The first really is lack of representation. So 30 years ago, the computing uh, women workforce was 36%. And, um, and in 2019, that number has fallen to 27%. That has actually created a gap of 8 million women in the tech workforce while every business on the planet is becoming a digital business that's uh that's been driven by the the pandemic second is the increased displacement mm. for of women held jobs according to the bureau of labor statistics due to covid 19 uh the pandemic uh, the pandemic you know because of that more than 2.2 million women were unemployed and it's estimated that 180 women's jobs will be eliminated over the next 20 years as a result of ai transformation um so that's just jarring right there alone the lack of supplier diversity allocation is another factor uh, today, only 3% of corporate procurement dollars and 5% of federal contracts are going to women-owned firms. This situation is exacerbated by investors reducing their investment in women-led tech companies, taking it to less than 2%. So I'm asking all of you to, uh, to join with, with us to create a collective force to avert the crisis. And here are some ways we want you to get engaged. And you can do that through Women in Cloud, uh, its community partners, and through the WIC Digital Network. So here are top, the top five reasons we want you to consider joining the WIC Digital Network. As a part of this community, you have the opportunity to share your voice and ideas by becoming a speaker to advance gender equity and inclusive narratives in the tech ecosystem. You can get recognition by rolling out uh, WIC solutions and becoming a champion within your company. You can unlock early access to participate in programs that advance the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, signature events, and um, access to business mentors and advisors, like uh, some of the folks we have joining us today from Accenture. You can improve your employability by increasing your cloud knowledge by leveraging educational resources around business, leadership, and technology. And finally, you can connect and engage with like-minded professionals by participating in groups specific to your interests within the WIC network. So are you ready to engage today? Uh, we have a lot coming up. We're gonna have a power talk um, by Gina Fratarcangeli about the power of strategic partnering with Accenture. Then we're gonna have a power panel with some leaders from Accenture talking about the trifecta approach to building strategic partner, um, a strategic relationship with Accenture. They'll be talking to you about talent, business development, and alliances. Then we'll have a cloud solution showcase featuring um, some innovative solutions developed by women tech founders. And then we'll dive into the 
uh, advisor roundtables where you get to meet and connect and have small group conversations with advisors on a number of different topics um, at the at the roundtables in the lounge where you just came from. So today there's a couple of features I want you to take advantage of in, in Remo here. You can use the chat, you can use emojis to share your reactions, uh, stick around to connect with folks in the virtual lounge. And if you're sharing on social media, don't forget to use our hashtags, uh, hashtag women in cloud, hashtag she soars, and hashtag with X fortune 100. All right, so are you all ready to engage? And I mean, truly give your full intent attention to connect and learn and unlock access for each other. Let's let's see it in the in the chat. I'm seeing people say they're ready, getting some applause. Excellent. Um, so with that, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, to invite our first speaker today. Um, and here's what I want you to to think of: um, really be intentional about trying to meet a minimum of three people during the networking act activity today. Um, so. It's my pleasure to introduce Gina Fratacangeli. She's the Managing Director of Market Unit Sales Leader of Accenture, and also uh, one of the Women in Cloud Board of Advisors. So I'm gonna invite Gina to join me on stage here today, and she'll be uh, speaking to you with a great power talk. Gina, welcome. Hi, thanks Noel. can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. Take it away, Gina. Awesome. Well, no, thank you so much for having me. Um, and thank you so much for everyone who joined today. We have a phenomenal panel today uh, that I'm really excited about. And as we look at the activities for today, the, I'll share some thoughts on the data and statistics of what we're seeing with women in the space. And then we'll get into that panel. And then most importantly, I think for each one of you who's taken the time out to participate is the breakout roundtables and the opportunity for you to really get some one-on-one -on -one time with senior Accenture folks and understand and learn a little bit more um, about the workings of Accenture and what goes on behind the curtain. So the time here is really for you uh, to give you a chance to build your network. And what Reza said is so important there about taking the time to reach out and, um, you know, networking in person is, is difficult and awkward sometimes and networking virtually is equally difficult and awkward sometimes. So let's all just get out there and get to know one another, um, spend some time having the chance to do the introductory conversations at those round tables. I know every WIC event I've ever gone to, I have just a wonderful time getting to know the different women who show up um, and also helping those women network with other women uh, and making those personal connections. So as I usually do for these kind of events, I'm going to challenge each one of you to build that relationship with the people you meet, but then also figure out one to five different ways you can help those people who you're having conversations with network with other people in your personal and professional networks. That's how we'll all keep getting better. So please take that as a call to action that I hope you will all be willing to participate in today. So thinking about this lunch and learn session, hopefully some of those, have any of the folks a show of hands of anyone who's attended any of the other lunch and learn sessions with Women in Cloud? I think a few folks there, good. Um, well, so it's a great opportunity for you to really get to learn the organization. The, the Lunch and Learn series is set up to be experiential and designed to help open doors for folks with leading fortune companies and technology business leaders at those companies. So the intimate learning setup is a space for you to learn about how you can do business with Accenture, understand our company culture and get access to some of the decision makers and the folks in our procurement process. So it's for you. And as a proud sponsor of Women in Cloud, Accenture is so pleased to be hosting the event today. Our goal for this session is a highly curated experience. So having an environment where the audience is tech entrepreneurs um, and other Accenture leaders, women in the technology space who are out there trying to learn more about how to do work with companies like Accenture and Accenture specifically for their own professional advancement and the advancement of their careers. And this is so important to Accenture. We so value um, 
investing in women in cloud and investing in women in technology. Reza touched on a little bit some of the challenges in the global economy right now and in the marketplace for women. And at Accenture, we really believe that the future lies in a work culture of equality and a workforce in which everyone is equal. And we underscore our conviction with bold goals to promote gender equality in a sustainable manner. And I'm so proud to be part of an organization that has set such ambitious goals that by 2025, we want to achieve gender parity worldwide. A pretty powerful and uh, ambitious goal that we are undertaking and in, in undertaking it with intense rigor. So at Accenture right now, more than 200,000 women are part of our team around the world, contributing to this environment that recognizes individuality, respects personal achievement, and promotes responsibility. Right now, 44% of all of our new hires are female, 22% of our top management is female, and 29% of our supervisory board members are women. So the numbers are increasing. Yes, each year over year, our stats are getting better, and we're going to keep striving to make that happen. And we're really investing in the community. It's not just about bringing folks into Accenture to help, but really the outward reach programs that we've established and are participating in. There's hundreds of programs around the globe. A couple here in North America that I'm really excited about is the ongoing effort with Girls Who Code to get the next generation of coders up there. The Mom Project, where we're actively reaching out to women who've taken some time out of the workforce to raise their families, who've had great experiences and really want to come back with a rich career. We're proactively reaching out to those folks and giving them access it back into Accenture in ways that haven't been able before with very flexible schedules to accommodate our changing lifestyle needs. And of course, our investment in WIC. We're very excited about that and super, um, Super excited about the challenge that lays ahead of us, leveraging groups like Accenture Ventures, which you're going to hear about from Ashley on our panel today, how we are at Accenture itself investing in startups and how you can take that knowledge and learning and see what our Accenture Venture groups could potentially do for you. So we're investing in female startups, not just with dollars, but with talent and networking, and we're making things happen for women in technology. So we've talked about some of the things that are going to happen today. We're really hoping you get some things out of it. Two things important for me, for you. Number one is the relationship building. So connecting with the leadership that we've talked about. And then number two, a deeper understanding of Accenture's role in the cloud space and how we're continuing to lead here with innovation and create a culture where we are looking for the, the next waves of technology um, and how we can have a critical role in this endeavor and how we can help other female-led companies have critical roles in that. So that's what we're looking forward to today. Reza took us through a great agenda. And with no further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Danielle, who is going to kick off and lead our amazing panel. Danielle, are you there? I know Reza's frantically working behind the scenes to, to get that window open. I know I've been yapping away, so <laughs> there she is, Danielle. Yep, take it away. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, thanks, Gina. I'm very excited to be here, and thanks for sharing the stats about how Accenture supports women careers. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to be here and to introduce to you our panel and to facilitate the next few minutes um, of our panel discussion. Um, so first, I'll, I'll introduce our panel, and then I'll start with a question for all the panel members. Um, first, I'll start with Ashley Miller, who's a Managing Director in Accenture's Technology Innovation Group. We also have Nicole Lanza, who's a Managing Director, a Banking Cloud Leader for North America. We have Nidra Dixon, another Managing Director, leading our Procurement Plus Global Supplier in Inclusion and Sustainability. We have Sven Loberg, a managing director leading our North America Google practice with, within our Cloud First organization. And we have Elise Levy, Accenture's Northeast Technology HR business partner. And Carolyn Gale, managing director responsible for our technology, health, and public sector, sector practice in Canada. So I'll start with our panel um, and I'll, I'll toss it over to you and feel free to introduce yourself further, but just a general question. What is something you believed in earlier in your career but think about differently now. We'll start with Ashley. 
Thank you so much, Danielle, and hello, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Ashley Miller, I'm a managing director with Accenture, and I lead a, a group that helps lift up startups uh, and introduce them to Accenture's clients uh, within a practice we call Accenture Ventures and Open Innovation. Uh, something I, I thought early on in my career uh, that I've had a change of, of heart around is um, uh, that you uh, that time in your seat equals productivity. Um, as, a, as a young worker starting out, um, I, I thought I needed to um, just be in the office from you know 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And, and work all night. But as I grew in my career and, and then had a family and have two young kids, um, I realized it's it's much more around productivity and um, you know that old phrase you got to hit your big rocks first get the big rocks you know into the base and then you can fill in with the pebbles and the water and the sand um, so really figuring out and prioritizing just being maniacal about prioritizing what do you need to get done today uh, but how do you stay true to yourself that's what I've learned I love that Ashley thank you for sharing Carolyn how about you and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks, uh, Danielle, um, for you know meeting off this panel. Um, you know, one of the things that I thought of earlier on in my career, and of course, it was it was front and center to me being home in COVID. And in Canada, we are still in a lockdown, um, at least in the Toronto area. Um, you know, going into the basement and finding all these boxes, opening them, as they said, Accenture, and then realizing I had boxes and boxes of notes of various women's initiatives that I've attended in the past 23 years. And I, you know, I'm a note taker. Um, and so I took copious notes interviewing all types of leaders. And, you know, what I've now learned is, you know, we're all unique. We all bring that uh, thing that makes us special and makes us differentiated from each other. And, you know, when I joined, we were called, you know, uh, Anderson robots. Um, and other terms, um, but you know, I thought it was enough to read and hear what everybody else did, write it down because I was gonna follow that to the letter and I realized you couldn't live up to that, right? Everybody else has their own story, everybody else has their own journey um, and it's unique and differentiated and that's what actually makes you special. And so you really need to start with that confidence within yourself, right? We're all very smart, we all have you know, valuable things to offer. But we have to believe in that. Um, and so I've discarded this view that, you know, I have to wear the same navy boots like everybody else. I'm in a pink phase this year. In my pink dress. Pink lipstick. So, and that's fine, right? Um, people are wanting to learn from me with what I have versus what I look like in trying to mimic somebody else. So that's um, what I've learned. And that's what I would tell my junior Carolyn. Be you. Be proud in being you. And you have it. You have it in you. That's great. Thank you, Caroline. I, and I love the pink phase. You look great. Ben, how about you? Same question. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sven Lohberg, Managing Director. I lead our, our North America business group for, for Google Cloud. So yeah, been with Accenture about 20, 20 years now. Uh, and so uh, yeah, grew up in the firm as, as certainly someone very tactical, technical architect. Uh, and over the years, certainly, you know, echoing kind of some of Ashley's comments, you know, certainly it, it's kind of finding those those hours of the day that you're most productive. It's not about kind of the quantity, it's the quality of, of those hours, as well as then, you know, the the understanding that you know nothing is, is done by by yourself in the sense of you are you are not the the only one, certainly as Accenture has grown, you know, over five hundred and fifty thousand people. It's understanding kind of how to to activate your network and finding, you know, those you you're not going to know everything, and so it's understanding that know what you know, and, and also know what you don't know, and engage then you know that wonderful network of people that you know, and certainly at, at a place like Accenture, there there are quite a few, uh, and bring those, and that's you know that's how to be successful. Uh, so that's what I've learned as far as just understanding kind of what what you know what is your kind of calling card and expertise but knowing also what you're not necessarily the best at and finding out who is that's great and and you find that everyone's very helpful right so that's, Elise. that's right there's always there's always yes there's always someone looking to to help and help uh, kind of make you successful that's right 
Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, hi, I'm Elise Levy. I am our Northeast Technology HR business partner. And I think for me, it's be bold. I think um, I started my career right out of um, college and I was in consulting and I was in consulting for about four years and I was just like, OK, I'm getting staffed here. I'm going to do this. I'm getting staffed here. I'm going to do this. And I realized this really wasn't the type of work or the type of, you know, what I wanted to do. And I felt that I had needed to leave Accenture. And I remember talking to um, the, at the time, the, the partner responsible for, um, for New York. And he said, well, what are the things that you like to do? And we talked about it and I moved into um, human resources where I've been ever since and I love it. And I look back and while it was only maybe, you know, four or five years of my career, I spent three of those really not liking what I was doing, but too, you know, too scared or too timid to make a change. And finally, when I decided to make a change it, and really do what I wanted to do, I found, you know, as others were saying, people at Accenture want to help you get to where you want to be. And it has helped me every step of my career remembering that and being bold and going for, you know, what interests me and not being scared to change paths along the way. That's great. And obviously we've worked together for a long time. So I'm glad that you took the opportunity to figure out a, a different role that you could play within Accenture. So thank you, Elise. Nidra, same question. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a managing director and I've been here for 20 years. And I think I have one of the coolest roles at Accenture. So I get to lead our global supplier inclusion and sustainability team in 20 countries. So I get the chance to help all of our diverse owned businesses grow and scale and also integrate successfully into our supply chain or those of our clients. Um, I think I would really go back and tell myself, uh, my younger self, that it's okay to share your story um, and to share some of your successes. Um, we think everyone sometimes that you don't want to brag or you know really boast about anything, but there's very way, good ways that you can share your story and it could really help someone that's new coming in, but then it can also advance your career. So um, I'm from Arkansas and my parents taught me, just put your head down, work really hard and everyone will take notice. And that does happen, but I do think you have to um, share your story. And I think you'll learn that today when you're networking. So it's really important to tell everyone um, and share some of the great things that you're doing. So I've learned to do that. And that has been really great for my career here at Accenture. So looking forward to it. Great advice. Thanks, Nidra. And Nicole. This is a great question, Danielle. Thank you so much. Um, so Nicole Lanza, I lead banking cloud for North America. So I work with all of our financial services clients. Uh, to help them uh, adopt a uh, public and private cloud, hybrid cloud environments. Uh, I do that everything from the sort of upfront strategy to the technical operations. I, I'm a deep, I go, like to go deep and wide. And this has been probably one of the most fun jobs I've had yet in my career, which surprises me because I'm older than I look. So I think what I would tell my younger self is your career will evolve and it will give you a great story to tell instead of you know expect to come out of college and do this one thing and go deeper and better in that thing right and the advantage of working for a larger company somebody like accenture which is half a million strong is that your career will take you know those many paths and you learn so much from the the sideways movements that you take in the course of your career so i actually started off in our traffic systems um, so it's very strange that I now work in the banking sector in an entirely different world, but you know, it's okay. And you just have to learn to roll with it. And it just, it's, it becomes a great experience and just expect that, that that's, that that's the fun part of, of working. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. So I'll start with our first question, uh, maybe back to you, Elise. So Accenture is hiring a lot of cloud focused jobs. Can you share what diverse hire opportunities will shape in the coming months and the type of candidates we're looking to hire? 
Sure. Um, so I know Gina talked about, you know, the progress and the commitment that we have um, to diversity and, and really um, around 2025 being at 50-50 gender equity. And we are really making an investment when we look at cloud. I'm not sure, you know, if, if everyone has seen, you know, the press releases that came out, but we are investing $3 billion um, in Accenture in our cloud business. And part of that investment is around recruiting and one of especially and i see this every day from an hr perspective one of our priorities is working and partnering with um you know with WIC with other companies that give us um insights and give us access to women um whether it's in cloud or even women that are looking to develop and you know uh, more technical coming back into the workforce i know gene also talked about um, I, I relaunch where we're bringing people, women that have been out of the workforce. So really focusing on outreach to those sources where we can identify and help um, improve and bring in uh, gender and, and I would say all inclusion and diversity, right, folks into Accenture. And when we look at the types of individuals that we are looking for, we're looking for individuals that have demonstrated leadership skills, that have a strong work ethic, individuals who are passionate, curious, creative, and solution driven. I think we've heard about everyone's stories here and everyone's path here. And while we talk about you know recruiting for cloud, we have so many great um, skilling programs in Accenture. So we don't want people you know to say hey or especially women sometimes say hey i didn't more i didn't click all the boxes so i'm not going to apply we really want to you know be um inclusive in terms of you don't need to have you know click all the boxes we, you know you need to have that intellectual curiosity you need to have that you know that drive to learn and then once we you get into accenture with so many different programs and support and training to help build those skills Great. Nicole, do you have a perspective on this as well? I do. So mm -hmm. I'm actually a recent hire to Accenture. It looks like most of the past 20 plus year veteran, but I, I've gone through the recruiting process recently with Accenture. And I have to tell you, it was a, it was a different experience than any I, I've been through. Um, it was very human centric. So the, the folks uh, who were put me through the recruiting process, they took the time to get to know me and figure out what motivated me and what what I was passionate about. And they, they, as that process evolved, they figured out where, you know, I would fit best in the organization and where I was most likely to thrive, which is an entirely different approach than most, right? The, most of them have, they have a role and they want to, they're looking for somebody who fits the role. And that's not at all, you know, how Accenture thinks about hiring. So I really do encourage you to talk to us because it's likely that, you know, there's a path for you here somewhere and it's just it's not you know even if it's not that obvious thanks for sharing uh, your personal experience with that process um our next question is can you share about accenture's company and how we foster growth inclusion and belonging within the company via the communities we partner with nidra Yes, if I can get off mute. Thank you very much. Um, and and what I've seen, and I really think that's important to understand. And even, you know, as someone said, it evolves over time. I've really seen the growth of how we not only say we're going to be inclusive in our culture, we're actually walking that talk. And when I say that, that means we're holding leaders accountable. And so with our culture that's really coming in, we're not only really saying that, yes, we're going to hire women, we're going to have women succeed. We're acknowledging where we don't have this. We're acknowledging where we need to grow and learn. And for me, I think that's the first step is acknowledging it and then actually having a plan that you're going to execute. And it's so great to see that we not only have women, and I like to call them, as we call them in supplier diversity, the he's for she. So there's so many that we will see a lot of our 
um, male colleagues will raise their hand to really help foster and bring other people along. So I do see that our culture um, is really saying we are going to be so inclusive, but we're going to be intentional. And we also do that with our supply chain as well. And that's what I get to see when we look to not only look at our workforce, but we get to look at our supply chain and also make sure that we too are looking for those great women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses that we can help thrive and we can collaborate with together. So I, I really love the culture that we're cultivating here. Nedra, I'll, um, I'll, I'll take the thread that you've laid out and uh, build on it a, a little bit, if you'll allow me, because your answer was so great. Um, you talked about how we walk the walk. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of uh, what Accenture does to actually analyze and study and understand why inclusion and diversity is a necessary part of growth. So every year for International Women's Day, at least the last four years, I believe, we've published a report that looks at the strategic importance of, uh, of inclusion to a growth mindset of employees and to the bottom line of the performance of our company. So we walk the walk because we know that inclusion and diversity is critical to our success. Um, and a couple of stats from some of our recent reports uh, we've learned that the proportion of employees who don't feel included in their organization is actually 10 times higher than what employers believe. So we're also helping do this for our clients because we know that that it's under um, underreported uh, the way in which employees feel included in their organization and that inclusion is actually a necessary component for innovation. In order for employees to unleash their innovation potential and have an innovation mindset, they have to feel included and seen and heard at their core. Um, so really excited that you talked about how Accenture is the walking the walk. Uh, and I think our research um, helps to, to buoy that and reinforce why we do it, because it's so critical to our financial performance. Absolutely. That's great. And thanks, Ashley. I see the passion in your response for sure. And you know, same, similar experiences. I mean, we I, I lead some of the inclusion and diversity work specifically for the people at at the clients that we work with and we are constantly looking at you know our teams on the ground and how we bring that inclusion and diversity lens to all the work that we do um, even at our clients so thank you for that added commentary caroline did you have a perspective on this as well so thank you uh danielle so you know i'm not going to repeat what everybody else said um you know just to specifically about this topic which relates to culture I think culture is very um, um, important to us at Accenture. I get asked this question a lot because I've been at Accenture for a long time. But um, you know, you know, how do we keep uh, refreshed? You're 569, as I checked just before I got on this call. 569,000 people working in 120 countries. You know, don't you? Do, isn't it overwhelming? Like, is anyone? Does anybody feel special? How do you? How do you, you know, highlight what one person does is like a, you know, a drop of rain in an ocean. And I would say it's big, but it's also small, right? So each country operates um, in a bit of a different way. So I, I work in Canada and we have a whole different perspective in terms of how we look at our culture. We have different focus groups. I'm actually leading a focus group for culture, working with our CEO in Canada looking at that um, and certain things that we're doing for our folks. I know that there were some Canadians I saw in the chat. So pay space and grace and certain things that we're doing this year in terms of, you know, uh, you know, grace providing more gratitude for employees, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but also you have an opportunity. A lot of folks who are on this call talked about the fact that you're, you're not in it alone. So I am a uh, managing director of Medic Center 23 years, but I'm also very unique. I've worked in every industry. I am now the technology leader for uh, health and public sector, but until April 1st of this year, I was our technology leader for financial services, which may seem like a pretty big shift, but the nature of the role that I've done and why I've worked across you know, different platforms, different industries, is I am known as um, one of our lead fixers for our problem job in Canada. Um, um, and I also, just because of my own value system and what I want to do, I like to learn new things. 
So I was thrown into, you know, our most complex job, you know, the year before that, our biggest cloud job, the year before that, and it just happened to be in different industries, but I wasn't just thrown in and said, you know, good luck, you're off on your own. There are leaders that are incentivized to help you to be successful, and you work with folks to understand what are your strengths? What is it that you're interested in? What do you want to be in the future? And we're actually, all of us around the world are going through that process now in our, it's a performance management process. And we're going through that for every single one of our staff. And I hear this over and over uh, for our new people. I can't believe you guys are doing this for everyone. I can't believe that there is a real focus on how we grow our people in the future. And that is a focus. Right. So you heard people talk about, you know, IMD and you heard a lot of discussion about um, uh, gender uh, diversity. And, you know, there is a goal by 2025 for us to have full gender parity. But, you know, we're also focused on a number of other facets from uh, inclusion and diversity as well. And overall, to help our culture to be strong, to help our people feel supported. It's a war for talent. We all want the best people, whether it's you know, I've worked with acquisitions, but I know some folks that are on here are entrepreneurs who want to also hear about how we do business development and how do they align with Accenture. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm very proud to say I'm working with an organization that continues to grow and develop and puts their people first. Great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. So now a question for you, Sven. As an organization, we're partnering with win enterprise opportunities. Can you share what type of opportunities you're seeing today in our customer base and what kind of solutions we're exploring? Yeah, so in, in you know, in this world, obviously, you know, very, you know, focused on, on cloud and in many ways, I think has enabled a, a whole spectrum of new opportunities, right? The, the barriers of entry, what you can now do as far as uh, with working with the different cloud providers and the services and just what can be built in a very quick, you know, a relatively quick time is, is frankly, you know, the, the opportunities there are, are, are greater than, than ever. So I think in this part, you know, kind of, and I also can do a lot of work with you know, various kind of open source and other kind of areas of, of things where it's, it's all about kind of building community and, and building, you know, off of an ecosystem of, of partners. So, you know, what we're seeing more and more is this, you know, this ecosystem play as far as power of the, of the ecosystem, uh, which plays into certainly on the technology side, but also just finding finding value. Uh, so I'd say, you know, in this case, we're, we're more and more. So I obviously represent kind of some of the, the Google Cloud areas, uh, but really it's it's across the board for any of them, which is OK. Try to try to look for what can be a, an area. Uh, that you can that be differentiated in and and build off of other partners in the ecosystem. Uh, and so that's a lot of what Accenture is do doing, right? It's saying, hey, we are partners with a number of, of different, you know, kind of uh, uh, companies, certainly the cloud providers. What can we do that now amplifies that? And also uh, with an industry aspect, because obviously a lot of what Accenture does is having deep industry expertise. It's now taking that working then with a, a particular cloud provider. And then in some cases also bringing in uh, some of the these small startups that have come up with these really innovative ideas and how can we then go to market and really kind of do some, some interesting things with clients who are always looking for the, the next kind of area of differentiation, how they can work differently. So that, those would be my thoughts on, on, on kind of where we're seeing kind of opportunity and how we're working with the ecosystem to, to build new partnerships. Great, I, and I'd love to hear from you, Ashley, from the innovation perspective, same question. Yeah, I mean, I, I really appreciate it, sir. Um, and boy, I get it, it is <laughs> to um, penetrate uh, Fortune 500 companies to navigate There's a question in the thread I look forward to talking about, talking with Karen. Yeah. Um, how can you navigate Accenture to take it really benefit our clients uh, without um, being hit say, of a large company? Um, so I really appreciate it's fun's answer because it all comes down to identifying the unique value proposition and how it aligns to our clients' needs. 
Um, so we're going to market uh, within Accenture Ventures and Open Innovation, our, our practice that looks at the the emerging startups and, and to some of the questions in the thread, you know, even pre, pre-Series A, I mean, we're looking at early stage startups um, and identifying how they align to strategic innovation gaps that we're seeing across the board of our clients. So key areas that we've touched on already related to talent, the G- Gina talked about you know, the future of AI and how that's going to have serious repercussions on the workforce of the future for our clients and ourselves. So we're looking at do we help our clients rescale for the future. Stage startup called Skyhide out of Canada. Our good friends up north, uh, Carolyn. Um, we're we're lo- working with startups like Pipeline Equity that help identify uh, uh, gaps in. Um, payments and rewards for uh, um, from an enterprise-wide perspective. Um, we've talked a little bit about sustainability. We're working with Arabesque S-Ray that helps you benchmark um, how you are performing in areas related to um, environment and social and government, you know, ESG, um, as well as inclusion and diversity. And so you can understand how you compare to peer comp- to your peers and where there are opportunities for improvement. Uh, we've also talked about cloud. I we're working with startups both in the journey to cloud, so how you get your data to cloud and migrate efficiently. You're in the cloud. How are you sharing your data with competitors and partners? Uh, triple blind that helps to mask the data so that you can share it, even HIPAA compliant. And clients like the Mayo Clinic to um, run, run analytics on patient a HIPAA compliant way. Um, so I think Sven hit it head on that, you know, helping to out how you align to the strategic trying to solve for our clients um, helps to more efficiently position potential partners in front of clients. Um, and since I have the mic, I can't help but share. I'm, I'm just so proud of what Accenture is doing with our Black Founders Development Club at Black Founders Development, BFD program, um, to invest in female-led and Black entrepreneurs because there is a a gap in in how um, Black-led startups are funded. Um, And and we need to solve for that. And we need to bring, um, bring, we as Accenture need to help solve some of these problems related to um, equity and inclusion um, in the real estate company. So thanks. I hope that shed some light and built off uh, the great answer from Sven. Yes, thank you, Ashley. And thank you again for sharing your your passion. Um, I know we're just about at time. I want to thank all the panel members for sharing their personal stories and answers to our questions. And I'll turn it back to Rice and Noel for our next uh, session. All right. Thank you so much, panelists. some great insights and I certainly learned a lot as as well. I know that we are partners with Accenture, but I really appreciate hearing it from all of you with the inside scoop. So you can just go ahead and click mic off, camera off, and that'll take you off stage. And thanks again. So let's get right into our next uh, segment here. Next, we're going to dive into um, doing the Uh, Cloud Solutions Showcase. Um, And that's where we're going to share with you innovative solutions developed by um, women tech founders that are ready for enterprise. Um, So pleasure to introduce uh, Bavia, we're going to have Bavia Agarwal of Zipboard join us first, and then she'll be followed by Sharice Hawkins of PageDip. So, um, Bavia, just stand by one sec for me. I'm going to grant you access to join me on stage. And and these entrepreneurs have gone through the WIC Microsoft Cloud Accelerator, and they are doing business with enterprise. And we're really excited to have you share with us and Accenture team today. So Bavia, I'll let you take it away. And you can share your screen if you'd like as well. Thanks, Raisa. I'm going to quickly share my screen and then introduce myself.
and I have been working with remote distributed teams for more than 10 years. While building these digital content and products with teams, I realized that most of my feedback and conversations were around visual elements, you know, marking up things. This needs change, that needs change, and it was painful. I will take screenshots and snag it and, you know, to share all the context and then add it to emails, Jira tickets, and it was a painful experience. Given that we were remote and distributed among, like in different time zones, we also did not have much, uh, you know, much options to do meetings all the time. I'm sure what I experienced, a lot of you experienced in the last year, and it's going to be the, the future. I also realized that more than 1 million organizational digital content is produced every day, which means like serious content, which requires back and forth, a lot of reviews and iterations and approvals from various stakeholders. And 94% of that feedback is design related, right? Like there's a lot of visual elements, but still content reviews are not visual. <clears throat> spreadsheets, emails, calls, I'm sure a lot of you would relate to that. That, that is still used to, to, uh, to share feedback on visual content. And that is a lot of wastage of time and money. <clears throat> enter the boat, uh, a way to visually collaborate, uh, to enter annotations and markup, like a whiteboard on top of your content. So it gives you the convenience of real-time collaboration but also makes you feel like you're in the same room with your uh, with your stakeholders right at zipboard our mission is to empower global teams to communicate more effectively and efficiently if you see here the whole idea is that you're able to interact with the content and while you're interacting with the content or a product for that matter you really are sharing your comments within the context giving all the context making it making it more contextual, more faster as well. And the whole asynchronous, you know, I know how many meetings larger companies have, and you know, the whole idea of being able to do asynchronous communication makes it also easy and convenient. You know, everybody has been talking about in the past panel about how important it is to be productive. And this is where, you know, you don't have to sit in every meeting for feedback. You can really do it asynchronously. We also realized that, you know, when you're building at scale, you would need to integrate into your process. You would want to organize all that feedback. We have seen projects with thousands of feedback coming in, and now that needs to be, that needs to be organized. So you can use the inbuilt uh, Zipboard uh, Kanban board or the spreadsheet views or integrate with tools like Microsoft Atlassian or API. We have some customers who have integrated with SAP solutions, uh, the Jira, and Microsoft solutions as well. It has an impact the board users and their clients have saved almost 30% time in their content production. So imagine a team of 50 people working on content, or you know, even if they're able to save 30% of their time, that's a that's a lot of impact. We also are trying to make uh, you know the entire idea of internal employees and external agencies make it more collaborative amongst them as well. We have teams across the world which use the board, some of which I cannot list here. In fact, Accenture, we've done also a, a, a pilot with Accenture where one of the digital learning teams for a banking client uh, wanted to share feedback quickly, and we've used that. So I've gone through the painful procurement process as well. Uh, but that's the whole idea. We want to make collaboration center stage for enterprises and make it more visual. Well, the the way we have uh, structured our tech, it's very diverse. It can be used across industries. We've seen use cases in web development, in digital learning, in construction documents as well, maps-based application. And it's just not limited to that. We've been working in marketing, gaming, and anywhere there are there, there is visual elements involved. I invite um, all of you to come and partner with us, expand our footprint, and you know bring visual collaboration to more teams and organizations worldwide. And we are also a proud Microsoft partner and Women in Cloud partner. Um, once again, my name is Bhavya Agarwal. I would love to connect with all of you. 
talk about your collaboration stories understand from you how you guys are solving that problem and um, just reach out to me here at primo i will be i will be in the post events as well or through email or phone thank you so much Thank you so much, Tavia. Great uh, showcase there and demo. So um, you can just go ahead and stop your screen share and then click mic off, camera off. Um, and then we're gonna bring up the next entrepreneur onto, onto stage with us. Um, Bavia, if you could just stop your screen share too, that'll um, take that off, which is great. Excellent. So next up, we're going to have Sharice Hawkins. Sharice is the CEO of Page Dip, and um, she's going to be showcasing uh, or, or showing a demo of, of her solution. So Sharice, if you're, uh, if you're there, just uh, click mic on, camera on, and you'll be able to join us. Okay, and as we wait for Sharice to come up, hi Sharice, how are you doing today? I'm great, how are you? Excellent. I just wanna uh, remind everyone, don't hesitate to use that chat and, and let everyone know, give, give your feedback about, um, about the content that you're, you're seeing today. And, and Sharice, I saw you popped off, so you can just uh, come back on, do mic and camera. You can go ahead and start your screen share and then we'll, we'll go into your demo today. And we're putting in the in the chat as well links that you can get connected to these folks. Um, so Sharice, over to you. Great. Hi, I'm Sharice Hawkins, the founder and CEO of PageDip. PageDip is a no-code cloud-based solution for creating and distributing a new form of document. Our customers can rapidly generate interactive, engaging, and measurable documents that move their businesses forward. Here you can see an example of a page tip from the reader's perspective on both a desktop as well as mobile device. It's important to note that page tips are mobile first by design and they also support the needs of the blind and visually impaired reader. The interactivity that you see here is also unique. Using our intuitive drag and drop editor, content creators can blend text and media components like images, audio, and video with page tip custom widgets that provide interactivity and the ability to really delve deeper and explore more. In short, readers are provided with a very immersive experience, all without having to leave the page. And content creators benefit in several ways too. First, the ability to create page tips is accessible to what I call mere mortals. Uh, and these beautiful on-brand documents are easy to create and don't require developers or designers. This is truly a no-code solution that anyone can use. You simply type, drag, and drop. Page tips support all of your brand elements from color palettes to fonts, so you don't have to make uh, compromises with pre-made static templates like in other systems. But the best part is when uh, page tips are after they've been created. Page tips are distributed on a unique and secure URL that's accessible by any browser, and this makes the delivery incredibly easy, and page tips can live within existing systems in your workflow. Whether you choose public or private distribution, you can ensure the right people see the content at the right time. And then once a page tip is released, you get new insights with every click. The expanding text that you see is our trademark Binks, and this allows readers to telescope in and see additional information, again, without having to leave the page. We've added what we call in-document analytics that provide new key insights into your reader's journey. Now you can quickly and easily know that a prospect didn't just get to the information, but they actually moved through it, and you can know specifically how that happened. Things like what words did they click, how long do they spend reading a specific section? And all this can be used to better understand if they're at a point when they want to take the next step in the buying process and talk to someone from your organization. It's quite revolutionary. By now, I'm sure you've uh, figured out that page tips can be used for both internal as well as external content, from product literacy and feature releases to solution briefs and, and marketing collateral. With page dip, you bring your content to life. Now, I want to take a look at a, a case study with you. On the left, you see a solution brief as a three-page PDF. This is an extremely important and helpful document, but sadly, it was shared in an old format, um, PDF. After all, PDFs, I think, have been around before the internet. So they're difficult to view on mobile, they're time-consuming to update, and if you want to update them and send them out again, it requires a whole new version. The bottom line is that they're flat, static, and generate zero insights 
uh, from the reader. On the right, you see the same content word for word reimagined as a page dip. Now the solution brief can include a relevant video, a call to action, interactive components, and even a chat bot to answer questions. Prior to um, using page dip, our customers tell us that their content is often expensive and developed to maintain, um, flat, static, and hard to update, and rarely, if ever, optimized for measurement. In, in fact, one customer exclaimed that you can really only tell if an email was opened, if a page was viewed at a really high level, or if a file was downloaded. And that simply doesn't give you a lot of information about what was actually read. With PageDip, we understand the needs of the modern reader as well as stakeholders that are trying to reach them more effectively. And we help you answer the questions that are really important, like how well is your, your content really working? And is it bringing you um, closer to your ultimate sales goals? With PageDip, we help you reimagine your content to become interactive, engaging, and measurable. It's time to make your collateral work smarter for you. I'm going to be in the lounge later, and I look forward to speaking with you about your specific content needs. I'd love to meet with you and learn more about how we can help. Thank you. Thank you, Cherise. Uh, great uh, demo there. Thanks for sharing about, about your solution. You can just go ahead and camera off. And everybody, as Cherise said, um, she'll be available in the lounge. Uh, for the networking session that we have coming up, and so will Bafia. And speaking of the networking session, let's dive into the meat and the excitement of what everybody really, really wants in this day and age. It's all about creating access. Uh, you know, we're all stuck at home. We can't really go out and have those meetings that we would have in person before. So today is the time for you to really uh, take this opportunity to become engaged, curious, and unlock access. Now, I have to warn you that this is a, a great session that a lot of people look forward to, and sometimes time passes without even realizing it. Um, for you, we will make sure that, um, where we have made sure to leave the lounge open so that if you want to continue your conversations, even after, uh, you know, the slated time for, for the session to end, you are more than welcome to do so. So don't let these time restraints hold you back from making those real connections. Um, so I'm going to take a moment to tell you a little bit about what to expect today. Um, I'll talk to you about how to make the most out of your experience and navigate the lounge in Remo for those of you whose uh, first time it's, um, it is here in this platform. Um, but first, I'm going to invite a couple of the advisors that we have from Accenture um, to join me on stage that will be joining us. Um, so you've already met the the folks that were on the panel earlier. Um, and. And um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what each of them are going to be talking about. And then I'll have one or two, a couple just come up and say hi. And they'll actually share with you what they are looking for today. And, um, and you can also hear from, hear from them what, what they would like to meet about, what they're looking to meet about. So I'll just go through here. So we have Danielle, who's going to be talking about company culture and technology careers for women. Sven is going to be speaking about Accenture business groups and ecosystem partnerships. Caroline will be speaking about sales, um, entrepreneurship, and using your uniqueness to drive success in that pink, that powerful pink today. Uh, then we'll have Nidra uh, speaking about supplier IND in the Accenture supply chain. Ashley will be uh, leading a conversation on collaborating and partnering and integrating with startups at Accenture. Elise will be speaking on navigating the company and HR. Nicole will be focusing on co-sell and channel opportunities to win enterprise um, opportunities. And then we have some others that you haven't met yet. So Marty will be speaking about company culture and technology. We'll have Jennifer um, talking about recruitment. Um, and so will uh, Patty Burrows, Nicole Lowney, Chris Rupert, Amberly Martin, and Ashley Watkins. So I'm going to invite a few of the folks that weren't um, on, on the panel to, to join me on, on stage here. And um, again, say what they're looking forward to today um, and who they're looking to meet and what they want um, 
what what you can learn from them as well. So, so Patty, I'll invite you up. Uh, just click mic on camera on and you can come on. I'll bring Marty on with me. Hi, Patty. Welcome. Hi, Raisa. How are you? I'm great. Are you having fun so far today? Totally. I am so excited about the activity that we're seeing in chat. It sounds like people are really excited to hear what we have to say. And so I'm really looking forward to connecting with folks, you know, in a more one-on-one -on -one discussion and get to know some people, spam my network, um, and just really talk about what folks are interested in hearing about from us today. Excellent. Okay. And um, so I have uh, Marty and Patty. So Patty, um, you can go, I want you to go first. Take a moment to, you know, introduce yourself briefly, briefly and let the community know what it is, what it is that you're uh, looking for and, and what they can meet with you to, to learn about. Okay, well, I'll start with introduction. So Patty Burroughs, um, I'm a managing director within Accenture as well. And I work with our largest insurance clients on their cloud transformation journeys, uh, which has been really exciting. I often like to tell this story. So when I joined Accenture almost 25 years ago out of college, I was a math major. I didn't know anything about technology. And the fact that I've been able to go from, you know, doing math to leading cloud transformations at our largest clients is uh, just a really great testament of the support and learning that I've gained over the years at Accenture. Um, I've also been really glad to be part of the Women in Cloud team. So I sit on the board of advisors. Um, it's really been a great way that I feel like I can give back to the community, right? I've obviously had a great career within cloud um, and a lot of opportunities and access through Accenture. And the fact that I can give back through Women in Cloud um, is something that I'm just really, really proud of. Um, and again, I just really hope to connect with some new folks today and um, you know, make some personal connections and hopefully some professional ones as well. Thank you, Patty. Uh, let's have Marty, you go next. Everyone, Marty Hebler. I'm also managing director with Accenture. I'm actually in our federal practice where I serve as our chief technology officer for the work that we do with the armed forces. So I work across Army, Navy, Air Force, and the Marine Corps as well. Um, you know, similar to Patty, I've actually grown up at Accenture. I just had my 26th year here, um, spent my entire career here. And uh, I joined as an engineering major and was like, what does a consulting firm want to do with engineers? But uh, found lots of things that have been very enjoyable. And from a topic today, I'm going to spend some time really talking about the culture. Um, and, you know, what it is like to work in the technology space as a woman and, you know, how we value that and those types of things. So that's really where I want to spend some time and looking forward to making some connections. And uh, I'm actually really excited to be here. This is the first time I've had the opportunity to participate in one of these events. So it's very enjoyable to see all the great enthusiasm and the types of people that are joining and the things that they're bringing to the table. Dick, thank you, Marty, and welcome. Uh, next up, let's have Chris. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Chris Rupert here. Uh, I've been with uh, Accenture for a little over two and a half years, I want to say. Um, so I represent a wide range of our software engineering opportunities here with Accenture in North America. Um, more specifically, been working pretty heavily within our, our cloud computing domains um, and our cloud first domain as well too. Um, so if you have any any type of questions or you know just curious about some of the case studies and you know, sort of what it's like to, to work in that group, I'd be uh, to happy to uh, to share some information on that. And uh, just shout out to the, the whole Women in Cloud group. I think it's a really positive movement. And this is actually my second event. Um, met, some, met some great candidates um, and, and networks, you know, the first one. And, you know, looking forward to uh, taking some time and, and meet with everyone and, and see how I can help you out. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Patty and Marty. So can just go ahead and click the off camera off for me. And what I'll do is just play a brief video so you understand how to navigate in the lounge when we uh, when we go to that experience. So all you have to do is click um, mic off, camera off, and that will get you off the screen. Great, so um, we're gonna do how best to move around. Very simple, so we'll keep it brief and then we'll come back. I'll show you the floor plan and then we will dive right into that networking experience. Okay, um, so here we go. All right, so I think you've got the lay of the land of how to best navigate the lounge in 
So I'm going to share with you the floor plan, which will show you exactly where you can find all these lovely people that we have with us today um, that, that you saw on the previous slide. We have uh, um, all of the different locations. And again, the advisors that are joining us, what you're gonna do when I go back out of present mode, all you have to do is double click on an open seat at your particular table, and that'll take you to that, that table. And attendees can join you and you can continue your conversation there. So um, this is a very uh, exciting experience, a great opportunity. We wanna make sure that you are are confident in your conversations and understand we have a few little rules of engagement to, to help out. So we like to recommend, um, you know, that don't be shy. If you end up sitting, you're sitting at a table alone, don't hesitate another table. Uh, join in on that conversation. We've already said that you just had got to double click on an open seat to move around. Um, and we're gonna, I'll put up a timer at the top to give you about 20 minutes for, for a conversation. I'll come back briefly just to check in into present mode, see how things are going, give a few closing remarks, and then we'll go back to the lounge again. So you guys can continue that engagement and stay for as long as you wish. Okay, um, to, to meet new folks. Again, I want you to try to meet three new people at today's event. So with that, going to get us out into the part that everybody is looking forward to. I'll give you all a few minutes to, to find your table, see who you wanna meet there. So we'll take it away. Everybody go and have fun in the lounge, have fun networking. Welcome back, everyone. How was that for you? Let's let's hear in the chat. Use the emojis. What was that experience like? Did you uh, engage? Did you get a lot of value out of it? Excellent. I love seeing that feedback. This is uh, uh, absolutely one of my uh, favorite sessions when we get to connect with um, with others at the small group. So I'm actually going to take uh, take some time and bring a few. Of, of you uh, onto stage with me so I can hear what you all thought. Now, I hope you're gonna be brave and come on with me. So I'm gonna, um, going to invite a few folks. I see uh, Lori was here and speaking with some folks. So Lori, you should have access to come on. I'd like to invite Laura up as well. Then we have, um, there was Zol, I think, yes, uh, Zoila here. All you have to do is click accept and just turn on your mic and camera. I'm going to ask you what the experience was like for you and, and hear about what you thought about your roundtable experience. Okay. Excellent. So Mariah, Laura. Great. Let's see who else we've got. We've got Taylor and okay excellent so ladies thank you so much um i want to hear from each of you what you got out of the experience tell me what table you were at who it was you met and um and, and what your takeaway was so let's start with you laura sure sure um unfortunately i had a very short conversation with sven um got to meet um susan and i'm really happy to connect with her um, and hoping I can get back um, and have more of a conversation with Sven. We, we got that countdown. So <laughs> it um, speeds things up pretty quick and um, yes. there's more to say and more to talk about, but. Um, absolutely. So we are absolutely leaving the lounge open. So you will be able to go back and continue that conversation. It's gonna take you exactly to the same table that you were at. So not to worry. Okay. There. Yeah, Perfect. so Mariah, how was the experience for you? Well, first of all, I want to say that this was not necessarily a planned event for myself. I had actually come across the Lunch and Learn series via Twitter. Um, I have a tweet that is seemingly to go viral, and it seems like there had been something aligned. And I said, I absolutely am tuning in. I am going to learn from these women. I am going to see what Accenture is about because I had been hearing a ton of buzz, a ton of buzz about Accenture, the new developments, new innovation programs and what was changing. So I absolutely wanted to come in. Um, I was speaking with Ms. Nedra Dickinson and it, although it was only brief, 
it was so brief because like I said, I didn't plan for the event. I had to throw something on to be presentable so that I could <laughs> speak with you all. Um, it was so brief, but in the brief encounterment, I was also able to really understand the perspective and the initiatives of Accenture and to see the diversity reflected in your staffing, in your executive teaming, to understand that this, um, this mission is truly genuine and has a definite purpose. It just makes me even more passionate about joining or learning more or even extending services for my clients. So it was a beautiful experience and it really reflected, it showed me that this organization is worth joining and partnering with. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you got a lot of value out of it. And thanks for expressing all of that and sharing with us, Mariah. Uh, Taylor, I'd like to hear from you next. What was your experience? Who did you meet and what was your takeaway? Yeah, so I got to talk to um, Caroline and Patty and Courtney. Um, I had a great experience, I think. So I work at a tech company, a much smaller tech company right now, and I'm considering making a career change. And I think it was just really amazing to hear how great of experience they've all had at Accenture and how they really feel like valued and um, important and that their opinions are heard. And that's just really good to hear. Especially for women in the industry, right? It's very important for our voice to be heard because we can make a difference and diversity matters. Um, Ella, how about you? What was your experience like? Hi, uh, first of all, I'm so thankful for this wonderful opportunity. It's just exciting to get to meet other people and who are willing to um, take, you know, take some of you of their busy time to help us uh, who are searching for a job, who are searching for opportunities to grow, um, take care about um, minorities. And I, I, I feel so welcome. And I have a uh, spoke with um, Nidra, with Courtney and with Chris, and they all have been just welcoming and yes, I, we can help you. And it, it is just a relief, you know, after, sending resumes uh, and not hearing back from managers to have the opportunity to hear that there is a light the tongue so it's so helpful thank That's you so lovely i'm you are so welcome and thank you to all of you for joining us today and i did promise that you will be able to go back to the lounge so don't worry just hang tight for a couple um just like Two and a half more minutes for me. Uh, ladies, you can just go ahead and click mic off, camera off, and that will take you off stage. And um, I'm just gonna share a couple more opportunities. So, cause some of you mentioned that it's all about access, right? We've spoken about it before. Um, Laura, I will go ahead and take, no worries, no worries. I can handle that from my end for you. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna share a couple more opportunities um, before we go back to the lounge uh, that I think you will be excited to know about. Uh, so you that are entrepreneurs that are joining us for today's session, B2B tech entrepreneurs, we have the 6.0 cohort of the uh, WIC Microsoft Cloud Accelerator that is starting on August 27th. The deadline to apply is August 20th. So we want you to take the time um, over this weekend. So make sure you get your application in so you can be a part of this uh, growing community of you know innovative solutions that are built for enterprise. So you can become co-build, co-market, and co-sell ready with hyper um, hyperscalers like Microsoft. Um, Next up, we have, I want you to save the date. One of our signature events is coming up in October on the 14th and 15th. That's WIC UNGA. We're gonna have, um, be focusing on accelerating the, U, uh, the 2030 UN Sustainable Development Goals through digital transformation, economic opportunity, global inclusivity, and leadership development. So a couple key things I want you to look out for during that two-day experience is we're going to have on the 14th, a full cloud employability track. So I know some job seekers are here. So you'll be able to participate in a hands-on cloud day. 
um, and we have two sessions with times for the US market and the EMEA market. And then we'll also have a Cloud Jobs Diverse Recruiting Lounge where you can meet with companies like Accenture and others that are actively seeking diverse candidates, meet with their hiring managers and recruiting team uh, to get answers to your questions there. Then on the 15th, we're going to have a leadership acceleration track talking about you know, how to build that high trust relationship, becoming a strategic and effective advisor. You'll get to participate in more leadership roundtable discussions, and we will also help you with warm introductions to industry leaders. Um, in the thought leadership track, we'll be focusing on AI for good, sustainability, and economic equity to connecting um, all to the, the UN goals. And we'll have some another opportunity for roundtables where we'll have an exercise and we'll talk a bit about um, AI and, and connecting that with the sustainable development goals. We will have a pitch challenge at WIC UNGA, and that pitch challenge will be the opportunity um, for someone to win $5,000 in cash and cloud credits. And we're really focusing on pitches that align to one or more of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So stay tuned for more information there. In regards to digital skilling and making sure that to help women continue to find and secure economically fulfilling jobs in the current market. There are over 600 Azure Skilling scholarships um, that were uh, made available through a partnership with Microsoft Azure and Coursera. Um, you get, it's available uh, worldwide and to men and women. So all you have to do is apply if you want to learn, um, learn about Azure fundamentals, Azure AI and Azure data. And then uh, last but certainly not least, so all of you are connecting today. We want to make sure that you uh, also join the WIC Digital Network. And as a part of that, you get to stay up to date with the latest news. You can continue to engage with other like-minded professionals in the, uh, in the industry. You'll get early access to special offers and industry events and continue to, to meet with, uh, with folks that you've, you've met here today and you know uh, participate in group chat, private chat, um, all on a, a private network. So um, I invite all of there and I want to thank all of you for for joining us today. I promise and I will keep my promise. I am going to let you all go back into the lounge. You can stay and continue to connect with the folks that you've met earlier. I want to wish you all a fantastic weekend and a prosperous future. And thank you so much to our partner Accenture for raising their hand to create a, a economic access and share with us about about what they're looking for, about their culture. And thank you as well to the amazing Women in Cloud team that worked together to bring this uh, experience to life. So with that, thank you everybody, and we'll see you in the lounge.